Hi, I'm Alex. Today, we are going to demonstrate the Infinite Eye product. Infinite Eye migrates AS400 RPG or COBOL source code to Linux on Azure or AWS. I'd like to introduce Oscar who will take an AS400 save file with an RPG application and migrate to Azure. If you have questions, please send them to support at infinitecorporation.com. Hello, today I will show you how to migrate applications from the IBM I to Infinite Eye in Linux, on-premises or in the cloud. Infinite Eye uses the same 5250 Telnet protocol that the IBM I uses, so you can use any 5250 client to connect to Infinite Eye. I'm using our own Infinite Eye client here. You can see the screens are very similar than the one the S400, but this is a looking screen of Infinite Eye to connect to this uh, system x86 64 machine. If I edit the connection, you can see that it's pointing to an IP. This IP is the same IP of this machine here. This is a Linux machine where Infinite Eye is installed. I'm going to close this, then I'm going to log in to Infinite Eye using a user profile the same way that you use it in the S400. Once again, the screens are very similar. We have an extra custom option 60 that is for our application migration menu. To migrate your applications to Infinite Eye, the only thing that you need to do on your IBM I is to save all the libraries that you're going to migrate to save files using the command save library. You don't need to do any sort of preparation or conversion of the data or of your code. You only need to save those libraries to save files. Then you will need to copy those save files to the machine where Infinite Eye is installed, and that's it. So we have an application called Dynamic in one of our IBM I's. We, that, that library, that's a application is containing one library only. The library name is Dynamic as well. We save that library to a save file, and we copy that save file to this Linux machine to this directory. This is the save file, and if I execute the file commands against that file, you can see that uh, Infinite I on Linux recognize that as an IBM OS 400 save file data. So we're going to use that save file to migrate the application dynamic from our, our uh, IBM I to Infinite I in Linux. The first option that we're going to execute is option 10. This is uh, the restore application command. We're going to use a save file. We're going to use an interim library. You can give it any name. This is a temporary library that it will have all the files that are coming in the save file. And it's going to uh, also store all the information coming on the save file as well. And it's going to create some temporary files containing the data that is going to be populated later. I'm going to specify the path of the save file and the name of the save file as well. When I press enter, this command is going to first create the library dynamic in Infinite Eye. Then it's going to start creating all those objects that in the S400 were created without the need of compiling source members. Objects like uh, uh, data areas, job descriptions, op queues, query definitions that they don't need to compile source members to be created are going to be automatically created in the library dynamic. And then it's going to start creating all the source physical files and it's going to put all the source members on each of those source physical files. And it's going to create uh, files with uh, the data that is going to be populated to all these uh, physical files. So when I press enter, you're going to see the execution of the command at the bottom of the screen. It runs very fast because this is a small demo application. So now the restore application is asking for the next save file to be processed, which is uh, normal in any typical migration when uh, several files, several save files needs to be processed at the same time. So I'm going to type a start and end to let the restore application command that we don't have more save files to process. And I press enter. The library dynamic was created. I want to work with the library dynamic. And as you can see, all those objects that need no source members compilation were already created. Job descriptions, message files, data areas, output queues, query definitions. Also, all the source physical files were created as well. And if I go, for example, to this specific source physical file, I can see one uh, RPG, ILE program. If in it, I maintain the integrity of your code, the code is by the same way it is in the S400. As you can see here, even the command slides are kept by Infinite Eye. So the, once again, the, the integrity of your code is, is maintained 100% uh, within Infinite Eye. So right now, we already completed the uh, restore of all the files and information from the save file. Now, the next step is to execute option 72. We're going to use the same temporary library or interim library that we created. We're going to use these parameters here. And what this command is going to do is to, it's going to start compiling all the source members in one specific order. First, it's going to compile all the physical files, 
It's going to create the, the physical files. It's going to add each uh, member to each physical file, and it's going to populate the data to each physical file. Then it's going to start compiling the logical files, then the display files, then the printer files. And once that, that all the files have been compiled, it's going to start compiling all the programs. So once again, when I press Enter, you will see the execution of the command at the bottom of the screen. As you can see, it's a starting conversion for member, creating a module. And the command was successful. Now, I'm going to work with the library dynamic. And now we can see more objects that were created. We can see that we have more CL programs, RPALE programs, physical files, logical files, display files. And I would like to show you this uh, file here. It's a physical file. It's the customer's master file. I'm going to switch to hex mode. If it I populated the data to our internal database. It is a replication of, of the DB2400 database. Uh, it is not the DB2 IBM database, it's our own implementation of that database. It contains all the supporting capabilities that the DB2400 has. It has support for physical files, logical files with multi format, multi members, uh, triggers, journaling, community controls, etc. And it keeps the encoding of the data in the S400, which is EPSIDIC. As you can see, this is a file that the first three positions of the record is a pack field. You can see the value of this pack field is 00116 positive. If you can see the data uh, of this file in the AS400, it looks identical. No changes, no modifications uh, at all, no, no conversions. The data integrity is also maintained 100% within infinite eye. You can see a numeric field here. See the value of the field is uh, 1, 2, 3. You see uh, uh, characters data here. So the data is migrated the same way it is in the AS400. So we completed the migration of our library dynamic from our IBM I to Infinite I in Linux. Now we want to, we're going to make sure that application is up and running. I'm going to add the library dynamic to the library list. I'm going to call this program, which is the menu driver of this application. You can see the text-based uh, screens looks identical than the other for that the, in the AS400. The, all the attributes. Uh, like uh, you can see input files, uh, output files, input output files, colors, all those attributes are properly rendered uh, by any 5250 client in Infinite Eye. So I'm going to use option two. Option two is a subfile with a list of all the customers of the library dynamic. You can see you can page up and page down. Uh, this uh, subfile is ordered alphabetically by company name. If I go to the bottom of the list, we can see this uh, record, the XLE trucks record. If I go and modify the record and change it from XLE to ALE and press enter, this file is properly refreshed and the record is properly updated. So the application is up and running now in Infinite Eye. So at this moment, we have been successful in migrating the application dynamic from the IBM I to Infinite Eye in Linux. And that is not it. Infinite Eye has all the environment and the runtime necessary to keep maintaining and to execute all your applications in the same way you're currently doing in the S400. So you can see here, if I do a display job, I can see the same attributes uh, of the job, the same way that you do it in the S400. In this case, uh, for example, you can see that it's an inter interactive job. We support uh, um, batch jobs as well. You can see the, the definition attributes. For example, you can see the printer device assigned, default output queue, job definitions. You can see the spool files generated so far by this job. You can see, for example, the call stock. You can see the open files. And also, you can execute commands like, for example, um, work active jobs. You can see all the subsystems, basic subsystems, or default subsystems are created. You can create your own. You can execute work job queue, for example. Same things. The main uh, job queues are created. You can create your own. Uh, we can do a work output queue. Uh, we can execute commands like, for example, uh, open query file. And you can prompt the commands and you can page up and page down. And you can see that all the keywords are there. So, so you can see you can easily migrate your application from the IBM I to Infinite IDE Linux. Uh, the only thing that you need to do is to save all the libraries to save files. Then copy those save files to the Linux machine where Infinite is installed. And then you migrate those applications using the, the migration tools that Infinite I provides. 
the data in code, integrity is maintained 100% all the time, and you can continue running, you can continue maintaining your application, you can create new, new source members and compile them, uh, you can continue executing uh, all your applications the same way that you're doing in the S400. So this uh, concludes the demo. Thank you very much. And we look forward to working with your next migration project. Goodbye. Thank you, Oscar. As you saw, Oscar recompiled an RPG application from an AS400 save file with source code and recompiled it using Infinite I to be executable on Linux and Azure. Once recompiled, he deployed the application which ran on Azure using Infinite's replication of the DB2400 database. Just like it did on the AS400. To learn more or get your free trial, visit infinitecorporation.com.